Hello. My name is Father Stuart Smith, the rector of Good Shepherd Anglican Church here in Acton, Granbury, Texas. Welcoming you to this celebration of Trinity Sunday, the Mass of the Holy Trinity. We begin on page 323, the 1979 Book of Common Prayer, page 323. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of Thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love Thee and worthily magnify Thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. And on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. With our spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who hast given unto us, thy servants, grace by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity, and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. We beseech thee that thou hast to keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see thee in thy one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit livest and reignest one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a long reading, the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning one day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let us separate from the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning, a second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good, and God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. 
And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning a fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the firmament of the heavens. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good and God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, a fifth day. God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, and cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the cattle according to their kinds, and everything that creeps upon the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, a sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all of his work which he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all his work which he had done in creation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm appointed is Psalm 150, we'll say in unison. Hallelujah. Praise God in his holy temple. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him for His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise Him with lyre and harp. Praise Him with timbrel and dance. Praise Him with strings and pipe. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Praise Him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 5 through 14. Examine yourselves to see whether you are holding to your faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail to meet the test, I hope you will find out that we have not failed but we pray, God, that you may not do wrong, not that we may appear to have met the test, but that you may do what is right, though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. 
For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. When we, what we pray for is your improvement. I write this while I'm away from you in order that when I come, I may not have to be severe in my use of the authority which the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. Finally, brethren, farewell. Mend your ways. Heed my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, praise God in his holy temple that everything that has breath, praise the Lord, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ According to Matthew, Praise be to the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to thee, Christ. In the name of the one true and living God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. This great commission, as it's called, presents the last words of Jesus before he ascends into heaven, that they are to go out in the name of the triune God. This is Trinity Sunday, always the Sunday after Pentecost. It comes as kind of a capstone on top of the revelation of the Holy Spirit that comes on Pentecost. And now we're looking not only to who God is, but what is the mission of God? What is his purpose? And in fact, here at Good Shepherd, we'll spend from now on to Advent plumbing the depths of the Holy Trinity in the season after Trinity, which we observe. And of course, we could ponder forever and not come to the full understanding of who God is. At our Christian formation class tomorrow, we'll be looking at a couple of videotapes from a Bishop Barron, Roman Catholic Bishop out in California. And he talks about one of the purposes of the incense that is used in some churches at the sensing of the reading of the gospel, the sensing of the elements, even the sensing of the ministers and of the people is to deliberately put smoke in our eyes so that we might not completely understand or think we understand who God is. To that extent, God is a little bit of a mystery, right? And to think that we have God down in his trinity of persons, in his one godness, like we have gotten down the quadratic equation in algebra is just a little bit vain and pride and prideful on our side, right? How can we, who are limited in what we can know and sense and feel, going to claim that we know everything there is to know about a triune God? Do we even know everything there is to know about the people closest to us? If we have a wife or a husband, if we have children or parents, do we, can we even say spending a lifetime with them, we know everything about them and they're just human beings? In fact, to put, put it more pointedly, do we even know everything we need to know about ourselves? And how long have we lived with ourselves? Well, you're saying, too long, Father Smith. I'm getting kind of tired of myself these days. Well... There is a pondering and there's a pondering, right? 
Speaking of which, pondering, there's the old story of one of the most famous theologians the Western church has ever had, Thomas Aquinas, who had the habit of pacing up and down a certain beach as he was contemplating some of what would come to be known the Summa Theologica, his great writing summing up all the theology of the church. He was at that point in which he was trying to understand the mystery of the Holy Trinity, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons and yet one God. And as he paced back and, back and forth, he would think and pray. And he would catch out of the corner of his eyes the same little boy each day at the beach near where he walked had a bucket and was waiting as the water rushed in. And uh, he began to pay more attention to him to see exactly what he was doing because just as Thomas was, had his habit of walking down the beach line, this little boy seemed to have his habit of going out into the water, coming back again and going out. So one day Thomas stopped and said to the little boy, what are you doing with your bucket? He said, oh, sir, I am emptying the ocean. It comes in and I empty it. And he said, oh, son, you'll never empty the ocean. He said, I'll do it before you understand the Holy Trinity. Now, that's an apocryphal story. It may or may not have happened, but it bespeaks a truth. That the doctrine of the Holy Trinity is not meant to confound us, really, but to draw us into the mystery of receiving and knowing God's love. And as a matter of fact, there's a lot that we do know about the Trinity. Let me sketch out just a little bit of each person of the Trinity. So this will just be one sermon, not three sermons that go on forever, okay? In our first reading, we have the measured creation of everything that is, right? God doesn't do haphazard work. He's not like modern artists that just kind of throw paint at a, at a, a canvas and wait to see what it's going to make. There's no sloppiness in what God does in Genesis 1, is there? The writer of Genesis gives us the measurement by day. It's very, I almost say, almost militaristic. He makes us something, he looks at it and calls it good, and then he wraps it up and says, that's a day. And then he goes on to the next day. And he rolls out the creation. In the first few verses of Genesis, we have some powerful words. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of, the God, of God was moving over the face of the waters. There are no building blocks that God is looking at to use in His creation. What is a void? Well, if you can tell me what you're looking at, it's not a void. A void is nothingness. Maybe nowadays they want to call them black holes, but I think black holes actually are a something as well as a nothing. There's a void out there. And this is where we get the doctrine of the church called creation from nothing, from nothing, from absolutely no materials. God makes what is out of nothing. This is, we would say, God the Father of work, right? He is the original creator. We say it in the creed, right? I believe in what? God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. So you would say, well, there you have it, Father Smith. There's God the Father's job description. Make everything. But wait a minute. Everything that one person of the Trinity does, the whole Trinity does, we believe. So what exactly goes on when God creates? Well, look at the, the, the starting point there. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. Uh-oh. We not only have God there, but we have the Spirit of God. Are you up to two now with me? There's the God, the Father, who makes everything that is. There is God, the Holy Spirit, who in this case broods or hovers over the void. Think of a cloud, again, that cloud of incense. Cloud just kind of going over the nothingness. And God said. What do you say when you say something? You say a word, don't you? I'm saying the word, word, right now. Who is the word spoken by the Father? John 1.1 1, 1 tells us the word was with God and the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Who might that be? 
the second person of the Holy Trinity, God the Son, the one who would come into the world through the womb of the Virgin Mary and would be called Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. So before we ever get into the Genesis for the, the, the recitation of creation, we have all three persons mysteriously presented. God the Creator, Father, the brooding Holy Spirit, and the Word, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, through whom everything was made that was made. And so the whole Trinity is already front and center before we even get out of the first few verses of Genesis. So tell me, Christians, where do you find the doctrine of the Holy Trinity? Genesis 1. <laughs> where else do you find the doctrine of the Holy Trinity? Well, what does the Gospel say? Jesus gave them instructions to go out and teach what? Everything that he had taught them, baptizing them in what name? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. One God. Three persons. And so their instruction was to be not just about anything they wanted to talk about. I think this week I'll talk about the, the wonders of the universe. No. Talk about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So it is a teaching that we go through in the church related to who God is, so that we may know who God is. How many of you were ever told, as you were growing up, now, we're going over to Aunt Betty's house, and here's what you need to know about Aunt Betty. Uh, she doesn't like for you to make spills in the living room. So I would suggest you stay out of the living room. Or, now remember Grandpa. Grandpa doesn't hear very well, so you have to kind of shout at him, right? And so we are told these things about people that frame how we learn them, but we will really only know them when we've been in their presence and spent some time. Like to find out that Aunt Betty not only doesn't like things to be spilled in the living room, but she has a story to tell about how she selected every piece of furniture in that living room. And there are memories of people and events that made every piece of furniture special to her. And Grandpa, well, he lost his hearing in the war when a shell last, last landed near him. So if you shout loud enough and ask him for a story, he'll tell you what happened when he served in the military and how God saved him out of battle. You see, there are the things we think we know and then the things we have to experience by being in the presence of a person. And this is what I want to impress most upon you. God the Holy Trinity is three persons in all the personless means. We were talking earlier about one of the things that this COVID emergency has done is driven people out of the presence of one another. And a human being needs relationship, right? Even the, even the biggest hermit who doesn't like to be around people, who's the ultimate introvert, occasionally wants to rub elbows with somebody. Maybe even it's just to talk to somebody over the phone. Better still to be in the physical presence of someone. We need one another. We are made for relationship. In fact, one of the best ways of understanding God the Holy Trinity is that he is a communion of people, a communion of persons in relationship with one another. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit have an eternal love and delight for one another. And it is out of that love between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that everything that was created was created. And that means me, and that means you. It means me with my lop ear side ears. It means you with the funny nose. It means you with the pimples. It means you with the hair that never lays down right. It means you who are totally beautiful, perfectly beautiful. Everything that is made is made by the triune God. And we are made to have relationship with God. We're not made to wonder what in the heck is God? And when is this sermon ever going to be over? God is related to us. He loves us. So instead of running away from the doctrine of the Trinity saying, oh no, quadratic equations again, if instead we say, do I get to know about the one who loves me, who in fact is the author of all love? Yes, this doctrine, this teaching of who the Trinity is reveals why I was made. 
As I've said before, I used to tell my children, if you don't get to know the God that made you, you're missing out for the reason that he made you. He didn't just make you to go out and have a good time, make a lot of money, have a lot of experiences. He made you for communion with himself. And behold, what he puts in the church as our primary act of worship. I mean, he could have made it just, just sitting and listening to someone talk for an hour and a half. Yak, 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 yak. And that could be all there was to worship. Aren't you glad that's not all there is to worship? Aren't you glad that we move from this word, this precious word of God, to this experience of Jesus Christ in the blessed sacrament? Because God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit loves you and me, He has given us word and sacrament to taste and see who He is. Finally, I want to stop with, with this passage of Scripture from St. Paul in 2 Corinthians 13, which has to do with the Son of God. Back in verse 5 of chapter 13, 2 Corinthians, he says, Examine yourselves, uh uh-oh, examine yourselves, whether you are holding to your faith. Good suggestion. We have checkups for our cars and checkups for our bodies when we go to the doctor. You ever do a spiritual checkup on your faith and examine and see what your faith is like? Then he says, Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? There's an astounding question. Wait a minute, Father Smith. Jesus Christ is in heaven, right? Yes. So how can he be in heaven and also be what St. Paul says, that he is in me? Well, because he's God. He has no trouble with bilocation or trilocation. God is in you if you believe. If you've been baptized in Christ, like it or not, he is in you. So St. Paul says, have you forgotten that? Don't you realize that God the Son is actually inside you, dwelling in you? Some people locate it and call it the heart or the soul or the inner being. Analytical people say it's in the mind. It's my biggest thought. Okay. Choose your word. But wherever the center is of who you are, where your decision maker and your will and your affection is located, that is where Jesus Christ is living. He says, unless indeed you fail to meet the test, meaning that you've forgotten, you've forgotten who you are. I hope you will find out that we have not failed, but pray God that you may do no wrong. Finally, brethren, he says, mend your ways, heed my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you And then he says, greet one another with a holy kiss. Oh my. You mean it's part of the life of Christians to greet one another with a holy kiss? How do you maintain social distance and greet one another with a holy kiss? I'm afraid you can't. One of the joys, perhaps, of coming out of this condition in the United States will be that we'll not have to fear the touch of another human being outside our family. That we will once again feel the blood that is in the fingertips of our friends and members of our parish family to feel the warmth of the presence of another person. You see, when we are in contact with another person in the body of Christ, when we can exchange the peace, when we can greet one another with a holy kiss, the very life of God is shared. And we know that we are not meant to be alone. We are meant to be connected in the body of Christ. So remember, the Holy Trinity is not just a doctrine you get tested on before you can be confirmed, right? You you have to know Him. No, let me say it the other way. You get to know Him. You have the privilege of sharing the life of God. And so Paul is saying, test yourselves, you know? How some people will say, am I awake? Pinch me. Am I awake? Okay. So pinch yourself and ask yourself, Do you know that in you is the second person of the Holy Trinity, Jesus, the Lord? And so on this celebration of the one holy and undivided Trinity, we ask God to give us grace to spend the rest of our lives getting to know him. There's an old song from an old musical one time, 
part of which went, went something like this, getting to know you, getting to know all about you. And of course, it's a love song, right? Sung from a woman by a woman about a man. Also could be said about the truth, the church. We need to spend our time getting to know God, getting to know all about him. For he is the lover of our souls. He made us just as surely as we were knit in our mother's womb before we were ever made. He had already had us in mind. And so, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we adore you. We worship you. We ascribe to you all beauty and truth and loving kindness and wisdom. You who are holy beyond all holiness and yet condescend to live in us. Pour forth all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the good pleasure of the Father, and the mercy and grace of the Son, so that we might grow up into the image of him who died for us and rose again, Jesus our Lord. Amen. The Trinitarian faith of the church is beautifully explicated by the Nicene Creed, page 327 in the prayer book. Remember that this declaration of faith is anciently connected to the baptism of every person who is born again in the church. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications to give thanks for all men, Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, here I invite your intercessions for those suffering in mind, body, or spirit. For all those suffering the COVID-19 virus, 
for all those who live in fear of contracting the COVID-19 virus. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed St. Joseph, Blessed John the Baptist, the holy apostles Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Greet one another with the holy kiss. Worthy art thou, Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and by thy will they were created, and have their being. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. 
Blessed be God forever. Lord, we ask you to accept our sacrifice with humble, contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have you given me. Amen. And the holy sacrifice of this Mass is offered to the greater glory of God and thanksgiving for the gift of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And on this day, with high thanksgiving for the mystery of the blessed Holy Trinity, with special intentions for the church, that it might be a winsome advocate for the gospel of ministry throughout the world. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right, so It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. For with thy co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, thou art one God, one Lord in trinity of persons, and in unity of substance. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of Thee, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name, evermore praising Thee, and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou, thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, my Lord and my God. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins, do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, that safe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit 
these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. You may receive in both kinds if you desire today. sacred feast where Christ is received, the memory of his passion is renewed, the soul is filled with grace, and there's given us a pledge of future glory. Amen.
Those of you wishing to receive spiritual communion will begin with the act of contrition. Oh God, I'm very sorry that I've sinned against thee who art so good. Forgive me for Jesus' sake, and I will try to sin no more. In union, dear Lord, of the faithful in every altar of thy church where thy blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I believe that thou art truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself unto thee and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let me never be separated from thee, let me live and die in thy love. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in thy servant in the fullness of thy strength, in the perfection of thy ways, and in the holiness of thy spirit, and rule over every hostile power in the might of thy spirit, and to the glory of thy Father. Amen. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my body and soul into everlasting life. Amen. Blessed, praised, and adored, be Jesus Christ and his throne of glory in heaven and in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Amen. The anima Christi. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our prayer of thanksgiving after communion is on page 339. Page 339. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Bless, hallowed, Worship and adore to be our Lord Jesus Christ. In his heavenly throne of glory, in the blessed sacrament of his altar, and in the hearts and minds of his faithful people. Amen. May the souls of the faithful depart, through the mercies of God rest in peace, and may light perpetual shine upon them. Amen.